Next Chase vs Remix. It was about time that somebody would come and challenge Next Chase as a framework because over the last few years, Next Chase has grown a lot in terms of popularity, and uh, obviously there is always space for competitors and better frameworks to exist because that helps push each other in terms of developer experience, user performance, and a lot of other features. Now we have a finally we have a worthy competitor over here that is called as Remix, and Remix released an official blog post, which is to be honest a bold move. I don't think a lot of companies or frameworks explicitly release an official one but remix has done it and it's a long blog post i mean it's not a short one they have not just written down a couple of points for seo reasons and anything they have actually gone in depth of next.js and after reading this i was also convinced in a lot of ways that next.js is probably not the best server-side rendering framework or rendering framework in general for react now in certain use cases right so let's just go ahead and explore this blog post what this is about and why next.js probably has a very worthy competitor now if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow all right so the basic idea about this blog post is that they used a Next.js e-commerce example which was developed by the team at Next.js just a demo example app and they ported it in two ways the first port was minimal port where they tried to just copy paste and tweak the Next.js code to work properly in Remix now mind you both Remix and Next.js use React as the underlying library so they would obviously have a lot of similar components and functionalities and basically the whole UI architecture but Overall, as a framework, they differ a lot. So this first minimal port example is something like a patched way of running a Next.js code in a Remix environment. But this next one is the rewrite where the additional performance benefits would unlock. And this is also something which Remix did. And this one is much more interesting than this one. Let's see how it goes. So initially, uh, obviously, they clear off that we like Vercel as a platform because Vercel is the hosting and provider, official hosting provider for Next.js. Next.js and the company which developed the framework. So it's always good to have more frameworks because like I said, it increases competition. It helps both the frameworks or all the frameworks in the competition to push one another because somebody might be getting ahead in developer experience. Somebody might be getting ahead in performance and everyone can get the best of everything. So now they started migrating the e-commerce page from Next.js to Remix, which is this one on the left is a Remix rewrite, a complete rewrite and Remix. And this one over is the ported version. So once they ported the home page, you can see over here in the second GIF, Next.js over here is running a statically generated and stored page on S3, then served via their CDN. Not even S3, I don't know what storage Vercel uses officially because they are using Vercel as the hosting provider in all three cases. But the idea here is that Next.js over here is serving a static file. Remix rewrite and Remix port are also serving cached file on CDN but those things are actually generated on server side. So what Next is doing is it's using the HTTP stale while revalidate. This is like an official thing. You can actually cache pages using this stale while revalidate caching directive on CDNs. But what Next.js does is that it comes with its own proprietary static site generation which is an SSG logic which is you know just just vendor locking into Vercel but Remix over here supports the official HTTP SWR feature. So you can see in the first example, there is not a lot of difference in terms of performance. The 1.2, which you see is wrongly marked because you can see at 0.7, all three are ready. The 1.2 is because the loader, the cookie banner wasn't ready yet. So this is fine. Let's move on to dynamic part now. We're going to see that Remix write is 0.8 seconds and next chase is almost twice as slow as uh, you know, it's, it takes two times to load the same page. Now, why is that? Well, you see, if you take a look at the Next.js side, you're going to see Next.js first sends the HTML really quick. I mean, Next.js sends HTML probably quicker than Remix because it's sending a static file and then it gets all the data from an API call. And this is basically what Vercel recommends as well. This is basically what Vercel tells you to do with SSG. It says that, hey, load all of your static components using server-side generation with incremental static regeneration if you want. And everything else, which is dynamic, should come from an API, which is called on client-side. 
Why? Because you get the benefit of SSG. That means the first time the user would see a page would be really, really small. I mean, you would instantly type a URL, hit enter, and you would have something to see on the screen. And while the user is seeing that the loaders are going on, you know, you can fetch the API in the background and it'll just swap right in. Remix, on the other hand, says that, hey, we are okay for a 50 to 100 millisecond of penalty hit, but we want to render everything on the server everything from the products listing to titles to the image urls everything we don't want to run any single api call on front end and that is why you see that the moment remix app loads it basically is ready the the last 100 200 milliseconds are actually for loading images otherwise this data if you go ahead and view source this this would automatically be available in remix next year's on the other hand you can see for the first one second, it just keeps on loading the loaders. And then probably after 1.5 second or so, the data actually comes into picture. Now, of course, Remix actually very proudly says why this works. This works off because this nice waterfall. And if you don't know what this waterfall means, in general, this waterfall over here says that all of these resources are being loaded parallelly. That means for maximum efficiency, I mean, once all of these resources complete loading, your website is ready for the user to interact in any way, right? So that means the more resources you load parallelly and on the left side of this graph, the better it is. In case of Next.js, you can see you load a bunch of resources, but then some resources have to wait for the others to load. This is basically a bad waterfall graph compared to this, where you have to load a few resources before you can load the other ones. Remix says that, hey, we don't have such problem because we render everything on the server. So basically all we have to load is the page itself and then to hydrate that page again, the runtime and images and all that stuff. Now to summarize this performance gain, which Remix get is mostly because of its everything it is running and rendering is on the edge. So you see this Remix rewrite over here is a complete port of this Next.js app which is rendered on the edge and they are using fly.io in this example to render the complete Remix application on the edge itself. And this example where they use the Shopify API, Remix also mentioned that the API itself is quite fast. So you will not have any delays or problems because of the API call. So that just adds to the contribution. Whereas over here in this next JS example, you're gonna see that you load the document first then again, the document has to make a call to the Shopify servers from the client's computer, which probably would not have as much network bandwidth as a EC2 server running on AWS infrastructure in the cloud. Yours is probably much cheaper in terms of speed and performance, your computer to make that API call. And that is why this example appears to be much slower than the Remix Rewrite one. Of course, most of this is fixable the moment you change this Next.js example from get static props to get server side props, where you are also now rendering Next.js on the fly and doing SSR every single time. But what's missing with Next.js right now, which would be coming soon, as uh, I think somebody said on Twitter, that when you use get server side props with Next.js, it doesn't necessarily render on the edge, right? It just calls a Lambda function across somewhere across the world which would again be you know a lengthy process but that feature is also coming natively with Next.js and Vercel that when you call get server side props it will render your response on the edge using Cloudflare workers and this is like coming soon and this is like vendor locked in as well so you have to use Vercel for that and the good thing about Remix the plus point which I like is that Remix is not vendor locked in I mean if you want to run Next.js in the highest performance mode in independently without Vercel, it's just a pain. I mean, right now at least it is. There is no first class Vercel alternative available today for next years. If even if you're doing with AWS and all that stuff, CloudFront is pretty bad in terms of invalidation times. Your builds would take longer. Lambda Edge it has a huge amount of cold boot. So somehow you have to make use of Cloudflare workers while having a CDN like CloudFront and it's a mess right now to run Next.js on your own if you're not using Vercel. Anyway, so the point is that the moment we use get server side props with Next.js, maybe in the span of few months, this would technically be equivalent. These, these, would, these numbers would match up. So what's the advantage or what's the edge of Remix now? Well, they continue the blog post and after going through the performance enhancements, which they gave, they actually get into the design 
of the framework itself how the user is supposed to use remix versus next so one of the good things about remix is that it uses or i should say it reuses a lot of platform level features of html and HTTP in general. So you see that Remix, I think we also discussed it in the launch video for Remix, but Remix, what it does is that it stays very close to how the web worked earlier. You know, a lot of times now, if I tell you to build a to-do app, which summits, uh, which has an input field and on clicking, it summits somewhere on the server. The first thing you would remember is making use of JavaScript somehow. But back in the days, and even today, right now, you don't need JavaScript for a very simple form. Remix takes that to the next level. They use the power of forms, but you're also able to make a lot of complex data mutations. So Remix has its own way of tackling it. But the point here is that the moment you have an API of the browser which you are using without JavaScript, it unlocks something special. Remix pointed out multiple Next.js problems where you can see that Next.js, if the network is offline, it just does not respond on add to cart button click. They said that, hey, we include that by default in our framework itself, that if something goes wrong, we will make sure that we inform the user. So error boundaries, errors, and everything is taken care of. It further goes ahead and tells you how it handles interruptions with the help of native HTML input itself. It's not like they are using, or they at least need to use any sort of JavaScript. JavaScript is all, always there because you can make network calls in the background. But other than that, Remix does not explicitly need JavaScript to be available. So they, again, go ahead and tell you and show you how Next.js implementation is super buggy when the network speed is really slow. These plus and minus button for the cart don't really work properly. Going ahead, Remix shows that, hey, we handle this very nicely, very properly. The network tab automatically kills the requests which are stale and not required. And, you know, they just go ahead and send the last one. I mean, it's a pretty nice move to actually show the official example as buggy and the ported example where nothing specific has been done to fix that bug is not buggy in Remix. Finally, like I said, Remix goes ahead and shows that this whole shopping API and this whole shopping app actually works without even JavaScript. So you can see the mutations, like I said, were defined in case like a form in HTML. Therefore, the moment you disable JavaScript, it will start working as a form in HTML. So add to cart button would act as a form submission, which would send a post request automatically on the backend and Remix handles that. If Even if you enable JavaScript, what all Remix is doing is sending a fetch request using the form data constructed to that same URL at the backend. So like I said, it's pretty close to the initial or you know early features of web which are still there obviously like using forms and get post put patch these methods using server side generation which is what we always used to do with libraries and languages like php and stuff so this is this is something which is very close to web standards and then finally remix just writes a couple of more paragraphs to justify why server side rendering should be a default feature to improve the performance and to increase the personalization as well for individual users. And to be honest, that seems fair. I'm actually excited to try out Remix and some of the projects which I've been thinking, some of the side projects very soon. Maybe it's, it will overtake Next.js someday, but that day definitely is not now because Next.js has way too much support and way too much community already built. But Remix has the potential to disrupt Next.js if Next.js does not innovate or keep on innovating on its own. And the best thing about Remix, which I like obviously having so much pain with Vercel, is that Remix is not vendor locked in. So for me, probably performance and everything and this and that definitely matters. But the biggest point for me is that this framework is not vendor lock-in as in you can use all the features without actually depending on Vercel or any other single cloud provider for the best experience that matters i mean next year you can still host in a droplet or an ec2 but you wouldn't get all those nice cdn features or all those nice configurations out of the box you would have to configure them on your own remix because it does not come with a vendor 
Therefore, it the, it's the responsibility of the authors to also tell how to deploy it in the best possible way in an open sense, right? In a at least in a single tech stack, which uses a lot of technologies like Fly.io or Cloudflare Workers and so on. So, yep, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, you liked it. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.